Ms. McGillicuddy and members of the Board of Trustees, Your Eminence, Cardinal O'Malley, honored guests, particularly Mr. John Kerry, United States Secretary of State and our speaker today, and our other honorary degree recipients, members of the Golden Jubilee Class of 1964 and the Silver Jubilee Class of 1989, members of the Boston College faculty and staff, alumni, parents, guests, and friends, and especially the 2014 graduates of Boston College. Welcome. <laughs> On behalf of the trustees, faculty, and staff, our more than 168,000 alumni and the entire university community, I welcome all present today in Alumni Stadium and those participating via webcast to the 138th commencement of Boston College. Today is a day of celebration, but also for hope. First, gratitude to our graduates for all you accomplished as students here your intellectual and personal gifts, commitment to service, and abundant energy have enlivened the academic, social, and religious dimensions of Boston College. Second, to the parents, spouses, family, members, and friends of our graduates whose support, encouragement, and wisdom were simply critical to those graduating today. May I ask that the family and friends of those receiving degrees stand to allow the class of 2014, as well as faculty, staff, and others present in the stadium this morning to express our gratitude. So parents and friends of our graduates, would you please stand so we can acknowledge your tremendous contributions. I would like also to acknowledge the Boston College faculty and administrators whose wisdom, time, and advice were critical in the intellectual and personal development of today's graduates. And then to the alumni and friends of Boston College whose generous gifts of time, advice, and financial resources made it possible for many to graduate today. And a word now to you, the graduates of 2014. Your time at Boston College has been special. We won another national championship in men's hockey. We opened a major new building for the humanities, Stokes Hall. Cardinal O'Malley and other cardinals, perhaps with more than a little nudge from the Holy Spirit, elected the first Jesuit pope. And we celebrated the 150th anniversary of our founding in 1863, beginning with the Mass in September 2012, attended by 20,000 alumni, students, parents, and friends at Fenway Park. And we ended our sesquicentennial with Mass this past December at the Church of St. Ignatius on campus. When Father Robert Fulton, the Dean of Boston College, welcomed 22 young men, mostly children of Irish immigrants, as the first entrance to Boston College in September 1864, he could not have imagined that a century and a half later, his fledgling enterprise would be recognized as one of the world's preeminent universities ranked 31st among national universities in the United States, 
and enrolling more than 14,000 undergraduate, graduate, and professional students from all around our nation and the entire world. Clearly, much has happened in the last century and a half. But the core values and beliefs of Boston College have stayed the same. BC has never been stronger, more vibrant, and more willing to assist the Catholic Church and contemporary society in responding to opportunities and challenges. From its beginning in Boston South End, Boston College has sought to provide students with a rigorous intellectual experience and to foster their religious, ethical, and personal formation to prepare them for citizenship, service, and leadership in society. I'd like to speak briefly about three specific hopes and expectations Boston College has for its students. First, a rigorous intellectual experience. A university is about knowledge, both the exploration of our intellectual and cultural heritage, as well as the assessment and enrichment by discovery, reflection, and action. Each of today's graduates was challenged to learn in depth about a particular major or a graduate specialty, and to, to acquire the habits of an educated person that will last a lifetime. Our core curriculum emphasizes the importance of the liberal arts and sciences, and it exposes undergraduates to a broad range of disciplines and questions to help them better understand who they are and what they believe. We hope that those receiving degrees today leave Boston College with the beginnings of answers to these and other key questions, and also with curiosity and willingness to engage these questions throughout their lives. Second, Boston College seeks to foster religious, ethical, and personal formation. We here prize our Jesuit Catholic heritage, which invites all members of our community to consider the place of religious belief, reflection, and right action in our lives. And we're encouraged to be people of faith, integrity, and compassion. Students here are reminded about the importance of examining values and actions, of integrating intellectual, religious, social, and affective dimensions, and of being accountable for their decisions. Certainly, it is our hope that graduates of BC will continue integrating beliefs and actions and striving to live engaged moral lives. We urge them to take responsibility for their own spiritual and religious journey and to approach life as a vocation or calling, not merely as a career. Third, Boston College desires to promote citizenship, service, and leadership. From the founding of the first Jesuit school in Messina, Sicily in 1548, Jesuit education has always sought to prepare people to be a leaven for good in society. The goal for Jesuits and graduates of their institutions has been to use their talents to transform the world into God's kingdom and to work for the greater glory of God. In the past century and a half, Boston College has changed in location, size, scope, and reputation. But its essentials remain the same. Jesuit education is a gift 
only fully realized when given away. Much like the declaration in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, that he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Of the thousands of young men and women who have graduated from Boston College since 1863, let me suggest that those who have had the most fulfilling lives are those who have used their education and talents in the service of society, who have given life and given it abundantly. So I urge you graduates of 2014 to be true to yourselves. Complete the Jesuit education that you have begun at the Heights. And do that by spending your lives giving it away, living and working as men and women for others. May you be forces for good and powerful examples for those around you. And may God continue to bless you and your families. Thank you.